Okay, so once you have that uh, Excel template downloaded, save it to a location on your hard drive that you're going to remember. So maybe it's a location within this folder or within the folder for this course. Um, <clears throat> and you can close it. You don't need to have Excel open in order to do this. Now we're going to switch over to AutoCAD. And in AutoCAD, we're going to run a very simple command called table. So just type in table and press enter. Wait for AutoCAD to catch up to me here. Now there's probably somewhere in your um, your ribbon where you find, I haven't found it, but uh, if you, I know if you type table then it will work. I think if you go insert you might get the option for insert or tools table. Um, don't worry about the table style for now, we'll deal with that in a second. But what you want to do is you want to actually go to the insert options, the next one below, and you want to go from data link. Now I already have a data link here, but I'm going to create a new data link. So this is what you'd be doing. So I just did a little testing last night just to make sure that uh, I know what we're doing. Um, so the launch data link manager is what you want to do. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to create a link to the Excel file that you have that you downloaded onto your hard drive and AutoCAD, it's going to create a permanent link. So if you go into that Excel file and make a change, let's say you add a column or you delete a column, it's going to update into AutoCAD automatically for us, which is really handy. So we're going to launch the data link manager and we're going to click on create new Excel data link. So I just clicked on that and this little window popped up. Now you have to give it a name. Okay, so maybe you want to call this um, Arch253 um, Schedule. I don't know, or, or maybe you want to call it uh, door and window schedule, whatever you want to call it, doesn't matter as long as you know what it is and as long as you'll be able to, wrap, to remember what it is, don't just call it temp or one or two, just give it something smart so you remember what it is. Because you can actually, I believe, you can actually um, use these Excel links in other files as well. So if you have another drawing that you want to create a link, you can actually use an existing data link. You don't have to recreate it every time. Okay, so enter the new data link name. And the next thing that it's going to do, it's going to pop up a window that asks you to find the Excel file that you want to link to. So wait for AutoCAD to do that. So it popped up on the other screen here. So use an existing Excel file or browse for a new one. Okay, so here's some existing Excel files or I can browse for a new one. I click on Browse. And now I come in here and I've actually got this in a directory already saved. So this you're going to navigate to the directory that you saved that Excel file into, the one you downloaded from D2L and you're going to click on open. And Now for path type it gives you a few different options for path type. You can use relative path. So for example if you have that Excel file in the same directory as your AutoCAD file or in a similar sort of area you can use relative path and what that'll do is if you ever move your AutoCAD file and you move that Excel file along with it as long as you keep that directory structure intact then AutoCAD will automatically create the new link. It'll automatically do that for you. If for some reason um, you've got it in a totally different location on your hard drive, you probably want to choose full path. That means you're never going to move that Excel file, but you may move your AutoCAD file. If you ever move that Excel file, then the path will break and you'll have to re redo this. You'll have to relink it. Okay, so um, I'm going to choose full path because I have this in a completely different... Actually, no, I'll use relative path. I have it in a fairly similar. It's underneath my building structures directory for this course. And I'll use relative path. That means that you know, as long as I keep the um, the core directories intact, I should never have to worry about the path breaking. Okay. And then we want to select the Excel sheet to link to. So it's looked into the Excel file. It's opened it up in the background, and it said, okay, well you got three sheets in there. The first one's called schedule. Second one's called sheet two and sheet three. Well, schedule is where you're going to find the schedule I gave you guys. Okay, and uh, you're going to link that entire sheet, or you can link to a specific range. I, I recommend doing the entire sheet. And there's a little preview there if you want to take a look at it, just to make sure that it's grabbing the right information. You can click on the preview button, and you'll see the preview will show up at the bottom. Come on, OK. Takes a little while because it's actually got to look into the Excel file again and get a little more information from it. There we go. So it gives you a little preview on what you can expect to see. Okay, so once you've got that completed, you've created that new link. We're going to press OK. 
let AutoCAD catch up to us. We're going to select that link, that Excel link, and then press OK. All right, so now you have the table coming from the data link. There's a little preview there. Next thing it asks you is specify an insertion point. Before we can really do anything with this table, we have to insert it into our drawing. All right, so once AutoCAD again catches up with us, come on, AutoCAD. Then we can press OK. And now we'll, you can't see it, but if I zoom in, you see it's attached to my cursor. It's really tiny. The table's really small. Okay? Keep that in mind because this will happen to you as well. You have to zoom in on your cursor before you click anywhere. Find an empty spot in your model space. Doesn't matter where it is because we're going to cut a viewport to look to that por uh, portion of model space. So I'm going to put it right here. I have an empty spot right here. I'm just going to click and insert that in. Now once it's fully inserted, I can change the layers. And that's what I'll do. I'll, I'll select a different layer for it. So I'm going to select the entire table. You notice it's a big mess of green. Don't worry about that for now. But I'm going to change it to A Anno Table. I'm going to put it on the table layer. All right, so the next thing that we're going to do before we do anything else is we're actually going to do our table styles. So don't worry about it. You'll notice that the text will show up here, but if you zoom out, it's like a little speck in your model space. Okay, it's too small. Don't be tempted to change anything at this point, but do understand that we will fix it, okay? So what we're going to do now is we're going to actually going to type in table style in the AutoCAD prompt. So table style. It's going to allow us to configure the styles for our table. Now, the, I only have one style. I only need one style. I don't need to create a new one. So I'm just going to set this as the current one. And I'm going to modify the standard table style. Okay, I only plan on having one table in this drawing. If I had more than one, I might need more different more table styles. These are just like text styles or dimension styles. You can modify every single component of them. But we only need one table style, so I'm going to click on modify. Now the tables are divided into three different types. Ta tables are are the the cells within the tables can be categorized as three different types. Either the title, which is the title of the table, a header, which would be sort of the main heading information. So this would be like, you know, the width of our frame, um the opening direction, you know, those things that we looked at in our Excel file. And then we have the data. Now the data is the actual, you know, where the headers intersect. So we can actually have header along the side as well and data in the center. That's what we're going to have. But there's, what I want to get across here is there's three different types of cells and we have to configure each one separately. So here's our cell styles. Let's start with the title first. So I'm going to click on title. You can configure all of this information for the title style cells. You can configure what color do you want the fill to be if you want to fill it with a certain color. What color or what alignment do you want? What sort of format? What type is it? Is it data or is it a label? And any margins that you want. Right? So the only thing I want to change at this point is I want to change my text style. So I want my title cells to use a five millimeter text style. So I'm going to click. Your ears will probably say standard. And you'll notice it's really tiny. I'm going to actually change that to 5 millimeter. So I'm going to use 5 millimeter text height for my title cells. I'm not going to worry about text color. It's going to be by block or by layer. And I won't worry about line weights. You can modify this later if you want to. Um, but just, to, just the text style. That's all we're worried about for now. So once we get the title configured, I'm going to move on to header. So I click on the cell styles. I change from title to header. Oops. And I'm going to make that text style, I'm going to make it just the next one down, 3.5 millimeters. So that's the text style I want for my header cells. And lastly, I'm going to change my data text to 2.5 millimeters. So that's the, that's the uh, small text sizes. Okay, I won't worry about anything else for now. Just going to be looking at uh, the text, get that configured properly. And when I'm finished, I'll press OK and close. Now I need to tell that this I need to tell AutoCAD that this table is actually should be using the standard style. So I'm going to click on the table just to get it highlighted. I know it becomes a big mess of green once you click on it it's because it's so small and the handles are so big. But I'm just going to click on it and I'm going to select somewhere where I can get this table style and I want to make sure that that's set to standard. Now yours may already be that way because there's only one table style in this drawing. You might already have that. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to resize the whole table. I'm going to resize it so it's a lot bigger. 
So I'm going to click on it. I'm going to find this little blue handle in the bottom right hand corner. Okay, not any other handle. Don't grab any of the other handles or you'll end up messing it up. Grab this one, uniformly stretch table width and height. Click on it and I'm going to zoom out. And I'm going to make my table, turn my ortho off, I'm going to make it bigger, a lot bigger for now. Okay, make it huge. And you'll notice that your text seems to have disappeared. It's still there, but it's really, really, really tiny. So if we zoom in, you can see I still have my text there, but it kind of blends with the line at this scale. Now that's okay, because what we're going to do now is we're going to tell AutoCAD which one of these cells are header cells, title cells, and data cells. That's the next step. So I know I have a title cell here. Right? I'm going to click on that cell. This is a title cell. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up into cell styles. This is a little window that pops up when I click on that cell. And I'm going to tell AutoCAD that that is a title cell. Now when I do that, you notice my text pops up to the proper size. Now I know that all these cells here and I can select a range, so I just clicked on the first cell, and then I went over to the last cell. I held down my shift key, and then I clicked on the last cell, and it selected everything in between the two cells that I clicked using the shift key. That's the same as in Excel. If you've, if, you've looked at, or if you've worked with Excel before, same process. You can select multiple cells by clicking on the first cell, holding down the shift, and clicking on another cell. It'll select every cell in between. I want to change these cells to header style. Now you can see the text just pops right out there. Now I still have a couple more header cells, the ones at the side right here. So I'm going to select the first one. Now you can, uh, you can actually press control and you can individually click on cells as well. So let's control. Oh, it doesn't do it in AutoCAD. Okay, never mind. Scrap that. Uh, shift, click, selects all the cells. I think you could probably do... Um, yeah, I think that's the only way to do it. I don't think you can select multiple cells at once unless you hold down shift and then click. Okay, these are actually called uh, header cells as well. And everything in here is going to be a data cell. Now we don't have any text in there so you don't see anything pop out because our data cells are empty for now. But we have a title cell, we have our header cells, and we have our data cells. We're going to do the same thing with this section under here. This is going to be called title. That's our doors. Okay, click on this leftmost cell here. Shift, click on the end to highlight everything in between. Change those to header. Okay, click, shift, click on the end to highlight everything in between. Change those to header. Okay, and then I'm going to click on this cell. I'm going to go to the opposite corner, shift, click, it selects everything in between, and I change that to data. So now we have all of our cells configured to the proper size. Now if, you, um, if you're going through that and you notice that uh, perhaps maybe you didn't make your window big enough, this is what it's going to look like. You're going to get a whole bunch of um, weird sort of wrapping of text. They call that text wrap. You're going to get all sorts of weird text wraps. So all you need to do is you just need to um, make it a little bit larger so that you don't get that text wrap. You don't want to make it too big. You have too much space in there. So just find that balance. Just find that balance between the right size, maybe somewhere around there. Um, just as a guide, I'll give you the size that I've got here. So this is about uh, 45 feet by 26 feet or 27 feet. Okay, it doesn't have to be exactly around that, but just to give you an idea on the range. 45 feet by 27 feet. Now that we have this configured, we need to add information into these cells. Now, you'll notice that when I hover over top one of these cells, you notice that I get that lock and link. What that's telling me is that, hey, you've got a link here to AutoCAD or from AutoCAD to Excel. And this is locked. You should really be updating this in Excel. Well, I don't want to do that. I want to update this in AutoCAD. I'm in AutoCAD now. I don't want to open up Excel again. I actually want to do this in AutoCAD. So I'm going to, un I'm going to remove the lock for these data cells. Okay, I want to keep the rest of them locked so I don't accidentally change them. But you'll notice if you try and type something in there, it says cannot edit a data locked cell. You can't edit it. 
you have to unlock it first. So fortunately we have the ability to unlock these cells individually. So I'm going to uh, select all these cells and I'm going to go up to cell locking and I'm going to change it to unlocked. Now I should be able to enter information in there. Now what it's going to do is it's actually going to send the information back to Excel if we wanted to. I'm going to do the same thing with the doors. I'm going to unlock all the cells in the door table. Unlocked. Now I can actually enter information into AutoCAD and it'll stay in there and it'll be the right size. Now the only other thing I noticed here is that it's aligning itself to the top. It's going top center. So I can change that too. I can click on all the cells and I can change the alignment to middle center. And now you notice that that text pops right nicely into the middle. Do the same thing with this one, middle center. Okay, so you can change the format. You can even change the, um, the data format. So if you have for example, you have a cell that you want it to format as a percentage or a currency. Maybe you want to put the price of the doors, something like that. You can actually change the data format to any one of these different formats. Now I'm going to keep text in here because that's what we ultimately what we want. We want to keep everything text for now, for our particular situation. Um, but that kind of gives you an idea of some of the things you can do with it. It's almost like Excel in a way where you can actually format these individual components, individual cells. Alright, so the other thing you can do, just a little bit of formatting, is I can make these a little bit bigger if I want to manually increase the size of the, uh, the title cells. I'm going to make them just a wee bit bigger. And then they, they highlight a bit more. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add this now to my main floor plan. It should be sheet A2. So I'm going to go to sheet A2. And I'm going to, I have a little space left over here. We purposely left that for the schedule. So I'm going to add another viewport here and put that schedule in that viewport. So I'll type in viewports. I get my viewport editor coming up. I'm going to click on a single viewport. And I'm going to just select one corner to the other corner. Now you may not have that already set up on yours. If you don't, if you have one giant viewport for this entire drawing, then just Grab the viewport and resize it so it's about half the si half of the uh, sheet. And now you see I got a new viewport here. I can basically put anything I want in there. I'm going to zoom in on that table. Now, it doesn't really need to be the scale. There is no scale for the window schedule, so you could literally just get it to fit by using a zoom. Get rid of this here, and just get it to come up on there. There. Now, that works except it, you have to make sure you have the proper window or your proper sizes and you've used the proper size as well. So what I'm going to do is it's actually pretty close to 3 sixteenths. I'm going to change it to 3 sixteenths and you can see that it's actually really close and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to modify it so that it will fit in that 3 sixteenths window. I'm just going to check to make sure that uh, nothing got shrunk too much. Go back to A2 and you'll see that even at 3 sixteenths, it actually fits pretty good. Just center it in that space. Now when I do a preview, well, it looks pretty good. We've got our window schedule, our door schedule, and we have our floor plan, our main floor plan, which contains the most amount of windows and doors right next to it. So it's a nice, easy reference for anybody looking at it. They will we'll have to, um, you know, we'll be including information about the garage plan in here as well, the windows and doors on the garage plan. That's only a few windows. It makes more sense to have this on the main floor plan anyways. So now all we have to do is just populate the table with the information. All right, so I can look at my plan here. I can go to door number or window number A. So I used A at the front. And these windows, if I look at my elevation, I'll do a distance here. Oops. These windows, I believe I drew them. Yeah, they're 30 by 60. 30 by 60 windows. So 5 feet tall and 2 feet 6 wide. So 30 by 60 windows. So I'm going to go into uh, window number A. The style of them is single hung, SH. The room name, well, this is the master 
bedroom as well as the bathroom. Okay, it automatically resizes for us. It's kind of nice. The width of them was two foot six inches, or we can do thirty inches. Let's do thirty inches. That's a little bit better. The height is sixty inches, and I'm just tabbing between the cells here. Now the rough opening. What we're going to do for the rough opening? I don't know if you remember from our window lecture. We're going to actually add a little bit of space on either side for the rough opening for the frames. So the frame size is thirty by sixty, but it needs a little bit of wiggle room when we insert it. And I believe the amount that we used was a quarter inch all the way around, if I'm not mistaken. So if we use a quarter inch all the way around, we're going to add a half inch for the rough opening size. So this is going to be 30.5 inches by 60.5 inches. And because it's in a bedroom, they will have to be egress windows. And the opening direction is up. It's a single hung, and it's going to open up. And if we have any other remarks, we can you know put them in here as well. OK, so we're going to do that for all of the, the windows. So we only have two other windows left. We have the, um, the B-style windows, which is the windows in the kitchen, the living room, the laundry room, and uh, yeah, the other the living, living room window. So that's B-style window. We have C-style window, which is the, um, in the kitchen here. So I believe this is three foot by three foot. And I believe we also have that same style in the garage plan. Oops, I need to change that. Looks like I didn't indicate the number properly here, but this should be it probably won't let me edit it. Okay. Uh what can I do with this here? I'm gonna have to edit the block here. <clears throat> Just explore this. I believe this will be C style as well. So same style. Thirty-six by thirty-six. Yeah, we get C there as well. Good. So this is a slider window. The room name, while well, we have the um, garage and the kitchen, the width is 36 inches. The height is, in my case, 36 inches. Check with yours, 36.5 uh, inches for the rough opening width and 36.5 inches for the rough opening height. Is it egress? Doesn't need to be. Opening direction, um, just choose the direction, so left to right. Maybe it op opens to the left. Okay, so you're going to fill in the B-style window as well. I'll let you guys do that. Now for doors, I've actually renumbered the doors. So I renumbered it from our original plan. It's okay, you don't have to if you don't want to. But I made uh, the main door coming into the, um, the entrance door number one. I made the master bedroom door number two, the bathroom door number three, closet door number four, this closet door number five. And then down on the main, or the garage plan, door number six was the entrance for the garage plan and door number seven was the mechanical room and number eight was the main garage door. So let's do door number one. We'll start with door number one. So that one was a three foot by six foot eight door. The style is just a uh, single door. So we have single or double doors. That's all we have here. Right? If you look at the closet and the laundry, those are double doors. So you can just put double for the style. The room name for uh, door number one, this is the uh, foyer, or the entrance. The width of it, now this is the slab width, so this is going to be 36 inches for the slab, and the height is 80 inches, that's 6 foot 8, 36 inches by 6 foot 8, those are the standard heights for the door. Now the width changes depending on the door, you'll have to check with your plans to see what size door you use. The rough opening. Now for the rough opening, we're going to add to the width, but we're not going to add as much to the height. So for the width, we're going to add a quarter inch on either side. So we have 36.5 inches for the width. Now, but for the height, the door slab, you need a threshold at the bottom. And you'll also need a little bit of room at the, at the top. So we're going to actually add more than that. We're going to add about an inch at the bottom underneath the slab and about 
or sorry, these doesn't that doesn't include the frame. Sorry, I forgot about the frame here. Because uh, the frame gets added on too. So we actually have to add, I would say, another inch for the frame. So we're going to be at 37.5. And the height, we need to add an inch for the, the threshold, plus another inch for the frame at the top, plus our rough opening at the top. So we're going to be about two, let's say two and a half inches. So we'll go 82.5. Now the locks, we're going to need um, deadbolt. And call it privacy. Well, no, it's not. not it's not a privacy deadbolt. And um, do deadbolt slash lock combination. Now, opening direction. If we look at our plans, is this a left hand, right hand, left hand reverse, or right hand reverse? What opening direction do we have for our door here? You guys remember the rule? You're standing on the outside of the door. What hand you use to open the door is the handing of that door. So it'll be left hand. Yeah, this one would be a left hand because we're standing on the foyer. That's the or the uh, landing. That's the outside. We use our left hand to open the door and walk through. So that's a left hand door. So we'll come back here. Opening direction. We just put in LH for left hand. Now, if I have a situation where like something like this is happening, you can actually stretch Come on. You should be able to stretch it. Doesn't want to stretch. Okay, let's try this again. You should be able to make these bigger. Yeah, so it's a little too big. Okay, just so you could, you don't have um, there we go. Just clean it up a little bit. All right, we've got lots of room vertical, so we don't need to worry about that. And I uh, just want to check to make sure it still fits in your window. If it doesn't, just change the scale a little bit or pan it. In this case, I'm just going to pan it over. There we go. All right, so you're going to go through and you're going to finish those off, all of the uh, styles. So door number two, uh, door number two is a single door. Uh, this in the master bedroom. The width of it, I believe, is two foot eight, so that's going to be 30, 32 inches. 80 inches is the height. So our rough opening width, we're going to add an inch and a half to the rough opening. So we'll do a 33.5 inches, and the height, okay, so I don't know what happened there, uh, the height of it is going to be, um, oh, it automatically converted it for me, that's nice, I didn't realize that. Um, the height of it, we're going to add, this one we add about a half inch at the bottom for carpeting, things like that, and we're going to add about another um, inch and a quarter at the top, so an inch and three quarters to the height, so we'll go 81 0.75 inches. And this was 83.5, right? Why does it keep changing that on me? Don't want you to do that. Just to keep it text. There it's text. There you go. And this will require a privacy lock. Opening direction is a left hand. Okay, the last one that I'll do with you guys is just these double doors here, just because they're a little bit different. Okay, so the double doors, let's do uh, door number four, the closet door. So just do a double check on the size. I believe these are four foot wide openings. Let me just double check. Yeah, four foot. Okay, so these are double. The room name is the master bedroom. 
The width is going to be 48 inches, or we can do two 24s, two 24 inch, and the height is going to be um, 80 inches. So for our width, we're going to add an inch and a half for the frames. So we're going to go 48, that's 49.5 inches. And the height, we're going to go 81.75 inches, same as the uh, interior doors. Now we need privacy, or sorry, these are dummy locks. Okay, dummy locks are the ones that don't have keys. They don't twist, they don't turn, they just simply for pulling. That's all they are. So dummy locks, opening direction. Um, I guess it depends which door, but we're going to be looking from the exterior. It would be left-hand reverse and right-hand reverse. So left-hand reverse, right-hand reverse. Okay, so a little bit of both there. The only other option that you have here, so we have privacy, we have dummy, and we have passage. And we also have a deadbolt slash lock combination. So this would be just like uh, most of you have in your front door. You have a, lock, a deadbolt at the, to uh, at the top, and on the handle you may have another lock at the bottom. Okay, that's a deadbolt lock combination. Privacy is one that you can lock from the inside, but it requires a special uh, tool to open, not a key, but like a pen or something like that. Paper clip, yeah, if you ever lock yourself in there. Um, and a passage is a handle that opens, but doesn't actually lock. Okay? So we're just going to fill that out. Now the only other door that might be a little bit tricky is the garage door. So for the garage door, it's door number eight. It's a sectional door. That's the style of sectional because it goes up in sections. The width of it is going to be 16 foot zero inches. I wouldn't. I would convert that to feet and inches as opposed to um, leaving it at inches. That just gets too confusing. So 16 feet is the slab width and height. And the rough opening, so we're going to be adding an um, inch and a half to either side of this door. So we'll add three inches to the width, so 16 foot, three inches. And the height, we're going to be adding um, just an inch to the, or, yeah, an inch and a half to the top. So let's do uh, seven foot, 1.5 inches. Now we don't any, need any locks on this door. And the opening direction is up. All right, everything else I do believe you should be able to figure out yourself. Any questions about that? I'll give you a little guideline on how to deal with the rough openings for doors, how to add on for the rough openings. So you're going to add one inch for the frame of interior doors. Add 1.5 inches for the frame of exterior doors. Add um, 1.25 inches, sorry, 0.25 inches around the frames for doors for rough opening. Interior doors don't have a threshold. That's the uh, part at the bottom. They don't have a threshold but require 0.5 inches for floor, finish, etc. That could actually be a little bit more depending on the floor finish that we do. Maybe three quarters of an inch if we need to. So these are, you know, these will get adjusted maybe 82 inches as opposed to um, 81.75. Right, so the framers will take a look at that. They'll look at the slab and they'll determine the rough opening height. But if you know if they have a question or they, they disagree with your value, at least it brings it up and they can call you up and say, uh, you know, you're right. You got rough opening 81.75. I'm calculating it should be 82. Am I okay to go with head with that? You say, yep, no problem. All right, that's for the doors. For the windows, do the same thing for the windows. For rough opening. Add 0.25 inches on all four sides of the window for a window frame for rough opening. Okay, so that one's easy. Quarter inch on all four sides for the window frame for the rough opening. 
Here you add one inch of the frame for the frame of the interior doors and another quarter inch around the frames. But don't worry about the uh, threshold at the bottom. Now exterior doors, we should probably add that in. Exterior doors require a threshold. Add one inch for this. And those will change. Those will change depending on the manufacturer of the door that you select. They'll, they'll tell you in the door manufacturer's catalog what size rough opening you require for that door. So don't worry about that too much.